So we're talking about international trade. Uh, and um, international trade is, um, the logic of it, it depends on uh, a theory uh, called comparative advantage uh, and uh, an absolute advantage. And I want to I try and explain that before we get into the facts of international trade. There are two kinds of advantage in this theory. One is absolute advantage. So we're talking about two countries, by the way. Well, this, this applies to individuals and companies, whatever. Um, absolute advantage is the ability to produce more units of a good or service than some other producer using the same quantity of resources. So, in other words, who's, who, who's absolutely best at, at, a given, um, at a given industry? For example, um, uh, creating blockbuster uh, IMAX movies is our product and we're talking about the United States and Haiti. Who do you think probably has the absolute advantage uh, and can make uh, more blockbuster movies with the same uh, quantity of resources? Probably the US. That's absolute advantage. Comparative advantage is the ability to produce a good or service at a lower opportunity cost than another producer. It's a concept we haven't heard in a while. Um, in other words, a person, uh, if a person gives up less to make something uh, than the other producer, they have the comparative advantage. Now, uh, comparative advantage is the economic basis for specialization in trade. Uh, if countries specialize in producing things in which they have the comparative advantage, i.e. the relatively lower opportunity cost, and they trade for the goods in which others have comparative advantage, both parties will be better off. Now, this is a profound uh, idea, and I want to illustrate it by talking about uh, a mythical farmer and a rancher. And so here I've gotten some production information about how much uh, meat and potatoes uh, each of these um, two producers can produce. I've, I've put it in the, num the number of minutes needed to produce one ounce of, and also how much they can make in a given eight hours on the right. Let's focus on the right here, okay? Um, so the farmer can make, um, think of a production possibilities curve, two, two options. Uh, concentrating all resources on uh, meat, the farmer can make eight ounces. Concentrating all resources on potatoes, the farmer can make 32 ounces of potatoes. The rancher, uh, going the all meat route, can make 24 ounces. Uh, going all potatoes, 48 ounces. Or they both can make some, some combination in between. Um, here is the farmer's production possibilities curve. So here's his eight uh, ounces of meat. Or if he does all potatoes with zero uh, ounces of meat, he can do 32 potatoes or somewhere in between. This farmer does not trade uh, and chooses to make, uh, chooses to produce right here, which is four ounces of meat and 16 ounces of potatoes. That's what he chooses to produce and consume. Let's pretend the farmer is self-sufficient. No trade going on. Uh, now, the rancher uh, can make uh, 24 ounces of meat or 48 ounces of potatoes. Uh, and the rancher chooses to um, produce right here at point B, which means 12 ounces of meat and 24 ounces of potatoes. The rancher has more production possibilities. Uh, and therefore can consume more. Let's go back here real quick. The farmer, um, let's see, let's look at meat. Who has the absolute advantage? Well, clearly the rancher can make more with a given eight hours. What about potatoes? Well, the rancher can make more of those too. Uh, in this case, the rancher, uh, one, one producer has the absolute advantage in both things. What about comparative advantage? Well, that depends on opportunity cost. Um, and as it stands, the, uh, the rancher makes a, a, makes a deal with the farmer, goes to the farmer and says, hey, look, farmer, uh, you need to stop making meat. Uh, you're not good at that. Uh, and so stop making meat and make all potatoes. I'll make fewer potatoes uh, and more meat, and then we'll trade some meat and potatoes, and we'll both have more. And the farmer says, well, I don't understand that. I mean, you're better at both. How can trading... Uh, give us how can trading help you? And so the rancher says, "Look, I've got a uh, I got a chart here because you're you're a farmer, you're a simple man. I'm gonna try and explain it to you. 
Here, up here without trade, here's what we're doing. You're doing 4 and 16. I'm doing 12 and 24. Uh, here's what I'm proposing. You do zero of meat and your full 32 ounces of potatoes. I'm going to make more meat. I'm going to go up to 18 ounces and cut back by cutting back on potatoes to 12. Now, of that extra meat, I'm going to give you five ounces. I'm going to give you five ounces. You're going to get five ounces. And exchange for 15 ounces of your potatoes. You're going to give me 15 ounces of potatoes. I'm going to get uh, 15 ounces of potatoes. So uh, my consumption um, is going to be 13 and 27 ounces versus 12 and 24 before. And uh, your consumption will be 5 and 17 ounces versus 4 and 16 before. Uh, you got an ounce more of each thing. I got an ounce more of meat and th three ounces more of potatoes. Seems almost magical. Here's the farmer's production and consumption with trade. He's at point A, which exceeds, his consumption now exceeds his production possibilities. He can't produce at point A, but he can consume there by specializing. Um, and the rancher is exceeding uh, his production possibilities uh, by specializing. The key is um, the, the one party will always have the comparative advantage in one thing and one the other, unless they're identical producers, which never happens. In this case, the rancher, I'm sorry, the farmer gives up less meat to make an ounce of potatoes. So the farmer has the comparative advantage in... Um, potato production and therefore logically should specialize in that trade with the rancher and they're both better off. This is a kind of a, an amazing um, realization and we're going to have to explore this more.